Hello and welcome. My name is Alan and today we will be doing more of the U.S. Constitution. Today we shall be covering Amendment 14. Uh, if you remember in the last episode we covered Amendment 13 which in slavery in the United States passes Congress in early 1865 and is, amend is ratified by the states at the end of the year in December. I think it's around December of 1865. So it more or less passes that same year. Amendment 14 is a bit different. Whereas 13 in slavery, 14 grants certain liberties and rights to citizens and former slaves. It passes Congress on June 13, 1866, but isn't ratified for another two years by the states until July the 9th, 1868. Now, I'll be go reading Amendment 14 from my constitutional law book here. So bear with me, it's, it's a little bit of a link here. <clears throat> Amendment 14, Section 1. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jur uh, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. <coughs> Section 2. Representatives shall be apportioned among the several states according to their respective numbers, counting the whole number of persons in each state, including Indians, not taxed. But when the right to vote at any election for the choice of electors for President and Vice President of the United States, representatives of Congress, the executive and judicial officers of a state, or the members of the legislature thereof, is denied to any of the male inhabitants of such state being 21 years of age and citizens of the United States or in any way abridged except for participation in rebellion or other crime, the basis of representation therein shall be reduced in the proportion which the number of such male citizens shall bear to the whole number of male citizens 21 years of age in such state. Section 3. No person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president, or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States, or under any state, who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress, or as an officer of the United States, or as a member of any state legislature, or as an executive or judicial officer of any state, 
to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same, or given and or comfort to the enemies thereof. But Congress may by vote of two-thirds of each house remove such disability. <clears throat> Section 4. The validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law including debts incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion shall not be questioned. But neither the United States nor any state shall assume or pay any debts or obligation incurred in aid or insurrection of rebellion against the United States or any claim for the loss of emancipation of any slave, but all such debts, obligations, and claims shall be held illegal and void. And finally, Section 5. The Congress shall have the power to enforce by appropriate legislation the provisions of this article. So that is Amendment 14. Let's break this down bit by bit here. Section 1. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm having trouble because I can feel it in the back of my throat and it's causing me issues talking but anyway section one basically says if you are born in the US or brought to the US and take on American customs and such you are a citizen. If you take the citizenship test, you are a citizen. Both of the United States and the state where you live. I mean, that's pretty clear. Uh, the states shall not make or enforce any laws that take away those rights and privileges of citizens. So you have to remember, many of these slaves were had been here for generations. Many were born here because you're looking back to the early 1500s. For the first slaves to land in the Americas. which I think was 1525, just off the coast of South Carolina. But since then, slaves had been brought in from, by the English, the Spanish, the Dutch. Whosoever had land here usually brought in slaves. They also willingly enslaved natives, but because of the immunities or lack thereof, 
they kind of stayed away from using them too much and went more for African slaves who had an immunity to many of their diseases. Section 2 It's dealing with the fact that all slaves shall be treated as a single person. Before the South wanted the slaves counted, but not as full persons. Or rather, they wanted them counted as full persons, but they didn't want them to have the rights of a person. And eventually, the the North was like, "They're just you're just using them as slaves. They're not actual people." Regardless, we end up on the three fifths compromise, wherein every slave is counted as three fifths of a person. But yeah, this deals with that. It says, "Every one of the slaves shall be counted as a person, one full person." Representatives shall be apportioned among the states with the new population, how it's set. And they shall have the same rights and privileges. And they even put in here uh, the whole numbers of persons in each state, including Indians. So even the Native Americans were included if they lived in the state, even though they weren't part of the U.S. <clears throat> but by this time, we had many of them being moved to um, Oklahoma for Indian territory. The Trail of Tears had already happened, which was under Jackson, 1820s, I believe. But yeah. Section 3. Um, basically, look, this was a civil war, but we're not going to really punish anybody. But if this happens again, there will be punishments. You cannot support a rebellion an insurrection, and still be a citizen. We're forgiving it this one time. Uh, section 4, and again, this deals with the debts. Debts cannot be paid off for, like, emancipation and stuff like that those are all null and void since slavery is no more you cannot charge any kind of debt for something like that but the US debt shall be valid and no state nor the US as a whole shall assume or pay the debt or pay any debt in aid of insurrection, rebellion. You know, the, we're still talking about, you know, we cannot have any more insurrections, rebellions like this. This, this cannot happen anymore. But the debt is for pensions, um, bounties, um, so yeah, those are fine, so we, we now have this incurring debt, which stays small. But now it's exploded into the trillions, of course. But anyway. And section five. Um, 
Congress shall have the power to enforce by the appropriate legislation the provisions of Amendment 14, just like we saw in Amendment 14 or 13. They give Congress the power to enforce these amendments because you know there's still a lot of people who disagree with them seriously. And so it's like, look, and if you don't like it too bad, we give Congress the ability to enforce it. So, yeah. <clears throat> but that is kind of a breakdown of how the amendments go. Um... <clears throat> But yeah, uh, it also triggers the Privileges and immunity, Immunities Clause, which is Amendment 14, Section 1, um, Due Process, which becomes part of Amendment 14, Section 1. Amendment 14, Section 4 deals with debt and amendment 14 section 5 we have the commerce clause as some things that have take part of this so and you have other important court cases that are involved, like Plessy versus Ferguson, which is a huge case. Um, I think it has to do with trail or train cars or something like that. Let me take a look here. Uh, page not found. What do you mean, page not found? Can you show me the web archive version then? Using my uh my uh app what was it? The Wayback Machine? Yeah, that's what it was, Wayback Machine. But uh Plessy versus Ferguson. Uh, it upholds the constitutionality of separate but equal facilities. <clears throat> so, but that case doesn't happen until 1896. Many people, there's a lot of issues with this 14th Amendment because they're like, look, we're, they're equal. They're fine. They're just separate. Which, in all honesty, they weren't equal. But that's what Amendment 14 kind of covers here. It was a bit of a lengthy one, I apologize for that, but um, we'll go ahead and end it there. As always, educate thyself, think, read, study, learn. If someone tries to tell you something you have trouble believing, ask them to cite their sources. I will have sources in the description below the video. I'll see you all in the next one, but until then, later.